All right, well, welcome back to Geeks Are Sexy. It has been a while since we have done the fourth Friday of the month show. I'm Jason LaDuke from Evil Genius Leadership Consultants. I'm your host talking about business in Las Vegas, success in Las Vegas, and all things you need, whether you're a business owner or not, to build your successful dreams here in Las Vegas. Today, I am here with Emily Wilson. She is a photographer. We met at a first Friday gathering a couple of weeks ago, and Emily and her family moved to Las Vegas about six years ago. She, like most of us, are fascinated with the work being done to revitalize the downtown area here in Las Vegas. If you haven't been to Las Vegas in a while, or if you live in Las Vegas, you haven't been to downtown in a while, you definitely need to go check out what's going on downtown, not just under the Fremont Street experience, which is still a lot of fun, but go, go a couple blocks east, see what's going on on Fremont Street East, and then really take a few a walk a few blocks down to the Arts District, the 18B Arts District here in downtown Las Vegas, and you'll see a lot of great, fun things going on there. A lot of quirky, cool little shops, a lot of quirky, cool little eclectic bars and that kind of thing. So please check out downtown Las Vegas if you haven't. But Emily, you remain drawn to the aura around doers and dreamers and people who have an entrepreneurial spirit. And that's what we got talking about a couple weeks ago, why I really wanted to bring you on the show. And you're looking to help those who endeavor to make a, the built world, whether it's a home, a neighborhood, or a community through your own personal energy and passion. I love that. Welcome to the show. Yes. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yes. So tell us about you. How did you become a photographer? How you know, where did you start out as a kid? Did you always want to be a photographer? What What's the story and how you got from, got to where you are today? Well, so in junior high, I definitely needed an outlet for all the ideas that were in my head. Mm -hmm. Was not great at drawing, was not yeah, great at painting. Guilty. And, uh, you know, ceramics also just kind of plateaued. Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I was able to take a uh, photography class in the 10th grade and it immediately it's like this, I love this. But at the same time, parallel to that, I loved art history. Mm -hmm. So I ended up, I went to school, um, you know, all my internships were with curators and, and museums and galleries. I went to school for art history, but I always did photography. And then my last year of school, or actually my second to last year, I was uh, in the UK studying. I um, was taking pictures for the school newspaper and uh, mainly the, the live shows that came. Okay. And, um, and that's when I really was like, okay, I really want to make art and not write about it and curate other people's art. That's awesome. I want to make my own. So where, where were you at in the UK? Because I didn't know you had studied over there. Oh, yeah. So I was um, at UEA in Norwich. Okay. Yeah. I've been out there. Yeah. And so, really quickly. I did some stuff in the, when I was in the Air Force, I did some stuff in the Lake and Heath area, and we had a day off, so we drove out that way just to kind of see what was going on out yeah. there. So, yeah. So I picked it, obviously, for its program, but also um, its proximity to London, which is also the reason why I had chosen UMass. To mm -hmm. go to and its proximity to New York, so I could kind of zip down to those urban, mm -hmm. uh, you know, amazing places and not have to live there. Yeah, that's the. I grew up in Connecticut, and that's where really the the one advantage of growing up in Connecticut is <laughs> um, that uh, uh, that you're not right in the cities. I lived halfway right. between New York and Boston. It was amazing. Right. So I spent a lot of time in both of those as a kid, and then I went to college in Boston, but. Um, yeah, it's great to be close to the city, but not in the city, right? Yeah, right. But then, of course, like after school, you know, it was either... So then I decided, okay, I'm going to be a professional photographer, mm -hmm. and I'll start now trying to assist other photographers. And, um, and so it was after college, it was, you know, basically either like L.A. or New York mm -hmm. for that. And so, of course, I'm going to go to New York. And, right, uh, why not? Went there, and then, yeah, I worked at a magazine for a couple, about a year and um, and then assisted other photographers and then started shooting on my own. Cool. Yeah. How do you think your art history background, as opposed to like a straight visual graphic arts background, which is what a lot of photographers do, how do you think your art history background helped you as a photographer? How did, you, how did that help build that foundation for you as an artist? Well, I think that you know, that's a really good question. Because yeah, I don't always stick to the ones I gave yeah, you ahead yeah. of time. Yeah, so I think that, that realizing, you know, that all these great artists, painters, you know, they all started 
with the fundamentals. They all started with the basics. Mm-hmm. And then they developed their own style and themes and, you know, to going off from there. And so I think with photography, you you need to know the basics. Okay. Um, there there should be a foundation and then and then you build on that. You know, is if you if you start off really abstract, you 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 sort of lost that process of getting you to mm-hmm. the abstract. So um, so yeah, I think I I think about that like Picasso. You know, I think about that. Uh, I've thought about that a lot over my career and how um, there's sort of different phases of my own mm-hmm. interests and and. And that's how you know those those great painters were. That's that's really impressive. One of the things I've learned as I've started to grow as a public speaker and do more professional public speaking is that those fundamentals are really important. I've had to go back to the ideas of just things like organizing a speech or choosing the right word. So for someone who's thinking about going into the visual arts or mm-hmm. becoming a photographer, what are some of those things that you go back to over and over again? What are some of those those foundational fundamentals that you would advise everyone to get really strong on? Well, I mean, the compositions, and I I think that, you know, I haven't really gotten used to looking at just a screen on the back mm-hmm. to make a composition. I still very much look through. You're a viewfinder. A that's viewfinder. how I learned yeah. to shoot pictures, too. I'm a too. viewfinder person, and that's how, that's how I do it. And so I think just the, the basics of, of composition mm-hmm. and light and um, and then how... You know, with the different f stops and apertures, mm-hmm. there's a different feeling that you get with those settings mm-hmm. within those settings. You know, um, when your depth of field is shallower, mm-hmm. you you have sort of like a softer image. You know, mm-hmm. if it's if you're way up, a, a, you know, f eighteen, f twenty two, it's super sharp. Yeah. And it could be really contrasty. And that works for some, some things, but definitely not. So so if you're using your phone for your Instagram pictures, what I heard here is composition matters. That's Even right. if you do it still matters. So and and you know, we, we make we make a lot of fun of the people who take that picture over and over again on Instagram and try to get it right and try to get the perfect filter. But that's a lot of what you do as a photographer, right? right? Yeah. Is is yeah, really absolutely. you have a vision of what the shot should be and you're not satisfied until you get there. No. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just yesterday I was doing a shoot at the uh, Barrick Museum on the UNLV mm-hmm. campus yeah. with uh, doing a portrait of a good friend of mine for a magazine. And I really, I caught myself even taking three frames of the same, the same composition. Mm-hmm. I don't think he changed his expression, but it just... It wasn't. It just wasn't exactly right, you know. Okay. And, and so I had to. I had to sort of stop myself and, you know, just is it do I move a little bit to the left? Mm-hmm. Do I do I go up just a little bit, you know? And so yeah, the, the little details that matter when yeah. you're doing something like that. Right, right. And then of course I get um, get distracted because the, his shirt's wrong. You know, something's wrong with the shirt, and then I got to. Right, like mine right now. I got a dude who always bunches up here, right? (laughs) So, uh, yeah, but, you know, one of the photographers that I um, assisted early on was a still life photographer. Okay. And for as so boring as that could be on a set where Mm. you're just moving things ever so slightly, but all of that attention to detail really made a great foundation in in the mm-hmm. work that I do, and which is portraiture, uh, whether that's um, you know a human interest story or just mm-hmm. like one one shot in an environment, every little thing is. You know, I'm, I'm I'm looking at every little detail, and if something's off, I can catch it before you know having to go back and retouch too much or post. And that was where our first conversation started about some portraits you had taken. Besides your commercial work, you've actually started to grow into this this, uh, this field of sports photography, right. particularly working with boxers. Right. And you talked about a couple of, you told me and showed me a couple of portraits that you had taken of a boxer before and after his right, match. Can you right, tell right, me about yeah. that experience? So, okay, so I've always done personal projects, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, 
uh, 15 years ago, for seven years, I followed young race car, some young race car drivers up the ranks mm -hmm. from dirt track, one of them up to a NASCAR seat. Okay. So I've always been attracted to the journey to the spotlight. Okay. You know, yeah. and, and it's just been recently mm -hmm. that I was able to just put that into one sentence. Mm -hmm. like, Journey to the Spotlight. Love it. That's the title of your new book. Yeah, right? Yeah. that's uh, So with the boxing, I personally started to box. I was looking for something that would give me mental focus and and uh, challenge me and learn something mm -hmm. new. So basically at the gym, it's, it's me and a lot of pro fighters. Yeah, for sure. Right. And... Um, you know, all these people are just working so hard and they're just, the sweat is just pouring off, you know. And so I will just walk up and say, you know, what are you working towards? Mm -hmm. What do I do? When's your fight? What's your story? And so I've been able to start to follow about five, five or so. And this six, is all local here yeah, in Las yeah, Vegas. Yeah, all local. Five or so, six fighters. Um, and all, all at the professional level, all in varying degrees. Mm -hmm. Some hold titles, some don't. And so I'm working to get pictures of them outside of the ring, outside of the gym. At what sacrifices are they making at home? What kind of training are they doing at home? What does the family look like? Um, what kind of sacrifices are, are they making there? And yeah, I really don't know where it's going to take me. But I'm, but I'm doing it. Uh, well, that's the best part of a story like this right. is you don't know where it's going to take you, and, right. and the story is going to be worth telling no matter what. That's right. And then uh, what I hope is that, I mean, in this journey to the spotlight, it, you know, it's applicable to sports, entertainment, a construction site, you know, anything that is, you know, people are working on something that's being built or being worked towards, mm -hmm. right? Um, a chef in the kitchen. You know, just all of that behind-the-scenes stuff. I mean, I had sort of, I guess on my website, it's called Behind the Scenes. But um, you have, And you have some beautiful, her website is amazing. We're going to give oh, you, we're going to take a break here in a minute, but I want you to finish your story. Then we're gonna, because we're going to take a break and this video is going to go up separately, I want you to tell everybody when you're done your story about how people can reach you in case okay. they only watch this one segment. Okay. So, but yeah, Chef in the Kitchen. Chef in the Kitchen. So it really, it's, it's just across the board. And that's what I love, you know, I... So I have to be sort of um, careful with how much of the boxing stuff that I show because yeah. I don't want it to be like, oh, Emily just does sports now, you know. And it's mm -hmm. like, no, that not at all. Like, I'm still doing stories of doers, dreamers, entrepreneurs, people who are just really working hard Love it. behind the scenes. And, um, yeah, one of the ones that I'm going to do just next week is a friend of mine, uh, Pop-Up Pizza. Mm -hmm. who, uh, Mike, who owns uh, Pop-Up Pizza here in Las Vegas, he got number one pizza uh, in Las Vegas, and All then right. fifth in the country. He just competed in New York, and so I called him up. I was like, Mike, we got to do, like... That's a story right I gotta, there. I got to come do a portrait. Like, we got to... He has a mentor, so mm -hmm. we're going to do a photo with his mentor as well. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we are going to close up this segment real quick, but tell everyone where they can find your website and tell them how they can reach you just in case... Don't go anywhere. I'm not saying... I'm giving you permission <laughs> to leave. I'm not saying you can leave, but if people only see this segment, tell everyone how they can reach you. Okay, so I actually just launched a new website um, yesterday. And it is emilywilsonphotography.com. It's always been that, but I just relaunched it. It, it, is, a, it is a beautiful website. I Thank spent you. a lot of time on it last night. I worked so hard on that. Literally, it took me three days. And it is an incredible platform to use. So emilywilsonphotography.com. And then I'm on Instagram at ewphoto. All right. Well... Don't go anywhere because we're going to jump back in. We've got, we're in a little bit in flux today with our other guests. So we're going to bring Emily back. We're going to talk a little bit more. I don't know what the rest of the show is going to look like, but I promise you'll get to find out within the next few minutes. So we're going to take a little bit of a break. We'll be right back with Emily Wilson. This is Geeks Are Sexy. Stay here. Keep watching. <laughs> 